Good evening, everybody. It is November 7th, uh, 2018. This is our regular council meeting. I'd like to get things started by starting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. City Clerk, if you could do roll call, please. <coughs> Gabriel? Here. Hansen? Here. McKinney? Here. Polikas? Absent. Shumway? Here. Schuster? Here. Stoner? Here. Pierce? Here. And Somerville is absent. That's seven present and two absent, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, this evening we have a proclamation. I'm going to refer to Councilor Gabriel. Thank you very much. This is a proclamation for Laramie Apprenticeship Week. Whereas the demand for skilled workers continues to increase in Wyoming, apprenticeship is an industry-led proven training model designed to meet this demand as well as retrain workers needed to diversify Wyoming's economy for generations to come. And whereas apprenticeship is a unique, flexible training system that combines industry-directed technical instruction with structured paid on-the-job learning experiences which contributes to increased hiring and retention rates. And whereas apprenticeship training models prepare Wyoming workers to compete in a diverse economy while keeping pace with technological advances and occupation-based innovations. And whereas today in Laramie, Cyber Wyoming has taken the steps to develop a Department of Labor registered apprenticeship program to train cybersecurity technicians in Wyoming. And whereas Wyoming employers have developed and led apprenticeship training programs since the late 1930s, resulting in rewarding technical careers, offering livable wages, most often without college debt, and whereas apprenticeship is a pathway for technical training, higher education, industry licensing, portable and stackable credentialing, required by industry in Laramie and Wyoming. Now therefore, on behalf of the Mayor Andy Somerville, I, Pat Gabriel, do hereby proclaim the week of November 12th through the 16th, 2018, as Laramie Apprenticeship Week. Okay. And we have a representative here, Pat Wolfenbarger. Pat? Thank you, Councillor Gabriel. Just want to thank the Laramie City Council for this proclamation. Uh, it's been uh, a great uh, satisfaction to establish this apprenticeship program, working with Michael Broad from the State Apprenticeship Office and uh, our co-founder, Cyber Wyoming co-founder, uh, Laura Baker and, and Michael have worked a long time putting this together and also the, the city has been very supportive of our efforts to enhance cyber uh, security training in the state. Uh, the city of Laramie, uh, and thank you, Janine, for helping mm -hmm. us uh, do a, a, a test program uh, that we're going to take out to uh, local government agencies that don't have uh, IT staff to, and help them enhance their cybersecurity and what we're hoping is that through this apprenticeship program uh, we'll be able to place uh, technicians in existing companies throughout Wyoming that will provide a greater resource for local governments, school districts, businesses, nonprofits, and others who need cybersecurity. Unfortunately, according to a recent uh, study by the Ponymon Institute, Wyoming has the second worst cyber hygiene in the nation. We have a need right now for almost 200 technicians, people with expertise in cyber uh, security, and uh, we're hoping this apprenticeship program uh, will help address those needs. So thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Can we get a picture? <clears throat> we'll have to Don't touch it. Necessary. It's going to come up, I guess. Yeah. yeah. We want all of us in it, or just yeah. 
No, I yeah, everybody can get in it. Yeah. I can we'll always just... crop you all out if I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> the those... technology out there is amazing. With those fancy <laughs> IT skills, right? Normally <laughs> <Here's just> <laughs> <laughs> the, the mayor just jumps on here. Right, so. right, right. Yeah, well, this, this is where the mayor is sitting. I'll just hold it. Yeah. Thank you so much, and again, thank, thank you, you all. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. All right, and then we'll have the mayor sign that. Then. Thank you so much. Okay. You bet. I explained to him. So mayor, I can I make a, a comment on yeah, this? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think this is becoming, of course, a, a, a common concern in the United States. Uh, and uh, I go back to my country where I was born, where you have a very extensive uh, Crafts, uh, craftsman uh, network uh, with three levels. There's the apprentice, then there's the uh, a journeyman, uh, which goes back to the old idea that they would journey around and learn with different masters, and then their master craftsmen. And that's still very much in, in vogue uh, in Germany for especially the, the crafts. Uh, and it's something that I think the American system is becoming based on in many, many fields now. And this is interesting. And, and that's why the support from uh, the city of Laramie and others is so important, because uh, there's a, that kind of need out there. This is kind of unique right now in the country, what we're doing with this uh, apprenticeship program. So we hope to provide it as a model to other states and communities. And I think you mentioned something very important. You uh, can get a good job without a college debt of several thousand dollars. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so moving on to um, public hearing. Uh, City Clerk, please read the announcement. <coughs> Notice is hereby given that the City Council will hold the following public hearing November 7th, 2018 at 6.30 p.m. in the conference... I must have the wrong one, sorry. It says at the conference room at 406 Ivinson Avenue, Council Chambers, uh, Laramie, Wyoming, to take public comments and protests on the following ordinance. Ordinance number 1989 proposing to amend section 10.20.040 of the municipal code regarding maximum driving speeds in the city. Anyone wishing to be heard should be present or may be represented by his or her agent at the meeting. Thank you. Is there anybody here who would like to make public comment? Okay, seeing, seeing nobody, I will close that public hearing. Thank you. City Manager, do we have any announcements? We do not. Okay, moving right along. Uh, disclosures by City Council members. Do we have any disclosures this evening? Okay, all right. Um, this evening, uh, Pat, Councilor Gabriel, is going to help us get through our um, agenda changes and settings. So get started. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would move that the following changes to the consent agenda be approved. Delete 8K and add 8N3, which is a work session on December 10th in place of our work session December 25th. Second. Thank you. And we approve by voice vote on that. So... <clears throat> Um, all in favor? Signify by saying aye. Thank you. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay. Councilor Gabriel? I would move that the agenda be set as changed. Second. Thank you. And we do again by voice vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? <coughs> Thank you. And Councilor Gabriel? I would move that the consent agenda be approved and that each specific action on the consent agenda be approved as indicated. 
Second. Great. And this one we vote. Gabriel? Yes. Hansen? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Palikas absent? Shumway? Yes. Schuster? Yes. Stoner? Yes. Pierce? Yes. And Somerville is absent. That's seven yeses, zero noes, and two absent, Your Honor. Thank you. So moving to our regular agenda, item number 10, Councillor Hansen. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to move, this is a resolution, by the way, establishing uh, two holidays uh, at, at the end of the year that would fall between uh, Sunday and Tuesday. Uh, I would like to move uh, to uh, uh, approve a resolution for 2018-70, uh, establishing December 24th, 2018, and December 31st, 2018, as city observed holidays and authorize the mayor and clerk to sign. Do I have a second? Second. Councilor Gabriel, thank you. Any comments? I believe this was um, one of our uh, Mayor Somerville's initiatives. So if we could just start out with comments. I think this has been a tradition in the past when uh, such a holiday falls between a Sunday and a, uh, and a Tuesday, uh, which would be, Sunday would be off anyway, and. Christmas Day would be uh, the, the 25th, the Tuesday, uh, it would be kind of redundant and actually matter of fact more expensive to get everything fired up in the city for the 24th and the same would also be true on the whatever the other date is, the 31st. Uh, the same thing occurs at the time. And so that would uh, just establish two holidays for that time. Councillor uh, Schuster? As, it's as much a question as anything else, and I don't know who wants to answer it over there. But I know when we do something like this, we have to then do our solid waste pickups on different days. So customers will be notified then what days their solid waste will be picked up that week. Because I know even though it's, there'll be a lot of trash, especially after Christmas with all the wrapping paper and everything. So. Hopefully we will still have a normal pickup that week, even though it'll only be a three-day week. Um, Mayor and Council Member Schuster, um, we will revise schedules based on when the holiday falls and publish those in advance. Um, solid waste is very aware that extra pickup around the holidays is, is helpful, so we rarely skip those pickups. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and Your Honor, we can also, of course, note that the city now has put out that wonderful uh, uh, app uh, which you have on your phone, which tells you what's being picked up, what day in your neighborhood. Uh, and I recommend it highly to everybody because I always got confused as to when uh, recycling would be picked up and it's all clear and I hope you adjust it for the holidays then. Thank you. <laughs> Any other comments or questions from Council? Okay, roll call. Should we take public comment? Oh, yes. Public comment on this item. Sorry. Okay. Thumbs up. <laughs> Thumbs up? Okay. <laughs> Obviously, new, new gal in charge here, so <laughs> a little rusty. You're doing just fine. Anyway, um, roll, call. roll call, please. McKinney? Yes. Gabriel? Yes. Palikas absent. Shumway? Yes. Schuster? Yes. Hansen? Yes. Stoner? Yes. Pierce? Yes. And Somerville absent. That's seven yeses, zero noes, and two absent, Your Honor. Thank you. Councilor Stoner, item number 11, please. Thanks, Mayor. <clears throat> um, I move to approve City Council Resolution 2018-67, certifying Planning Commission action <clears throat> amending the future land use map of the 27, 2007 Laramie Comprehensive Plan for the property described in the resolution, generally located to the southwest of 15th Street and the terminus of Bill Nye Avenue for an area approximately 2.99 acres in size. 
changing the designation of the area described from suburb suburban commercial to auto urban commercial based on findings of fact and conclusions of law and authorize the mayor and clerk to sign the resolution. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Councilor Schuster. Planner Tini. Sorry for the lengthy uh, motion. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> Vice Mayor and Council, uh, the item before you is a comprehensive plan amendment request. Uh, this is for a request for a property that's about three acres in size. Um, if you're familiar with the area, this is the old pro build building um, property. Uh, the property and the request is, would allow for the property go to go from suburban commercial to auto urban commercial. Essentially, it's one like step up in intensity in the land use plan. So within the comprehensive plan, um, with this application for the comprehensive plan amendment, the next item on your agenda is also related to the same site. Um, it is there subsequent zoning request. I'll talk a little bit about both of them simply because it just is inevitable with that. Uh, the applicant is here also and can kind of explain a little bit more about his project as he as they move forward. Um, as I noted, uh, the property is about three acres in size. It is a step up in terms of the intensity of the land use. The main goal of this would allow for the applicant to request C2 zoning versus the current B2 zoning that it is today. The C2 zoning, as you'll read within the zoning information, is, would actually allow them to uh, have a more wide variety of users within this uh, multi-tenant uh, manufacturing building that they're intending to produce or make out of the building that is existing there. <clears throat> the property, as we noted, um, is in a little bit of a unique situation. You have 15th Street, which is located on the east side of the site, which is a major street. And you have the future Bill Nye Avenue, which will be to the north of this site. When we looked at this, what you see is currently neighborhoods in the near vicinity. However, because of these major streets that are going to be in there, you're going to have a major divide, and it's going to become a logical corner where you're going to see heavy traffic with the intersection of Bill Nye and 15th Street. As Bill Nye continues to come from the east and in from the west, which we've had discussions about those over the last probably five years, more frequently, um, that traffic will be coming, and this is going to become probably a auto-oriented sector for business. It also has some of that frontage and visibility from the interstate, which provides uh, additional sight and visibility for businesses that are looking to locate in this area. So when we did take a look at this, uh, we felt that this was a pretty appropriate use here. Um, what you'll see is with the C2 zoning district, most of the time these manufacturing uses and things like that are located all within inside the building and are probably pretty similar to what was going on prior to the pro-built building, building being vacated as it was a lumber yard. Also in that area, you do have other similar users. You have a large auto dealer to the south of the pro-build building and the site that we're talking about. And you also have some large warehousing and manufacturing kind of buildings as you go down the future Bill Nye corridor, which is to the south of the Fall Creek uh, subdivision. In that subdivision there, you have a mixture of single family, twin homes. There's even some fourplex uh, multifamily units, mostly to the east across 15th Street as single family homes in that area. Um, as it's noted within the staff report, we did receive uh, public comments. Uh, there was quite a few people that were just interested in what was going on, what the building was going to. Um, and so as it notes, though, most of those inquiries were just, uh, they weren't uh, comments of opposition or in support, but just wanted to know more about the project. So um, based on that, staff does recommend um, approval of the comprehensive plan amendment. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions, and then I'll speak more to the zoning specifically when that item is up. Okay, so questions, Councilor Hansen. Thank you, Honor. I, I wasn't quite clear whether this was going to be then sort of a mini shopping mall or something like that, <coughs> or rather a manufacturing uh, units inside. I guess the building would lend itself to both, but I was interested as to what the plan is there. 
Vice Mayor and Council, I'm gonna, if you wouldn't mind, I'm gonna let the applicant actually speak to yeah. that. He does a much better job explaining the Good. vision than I do. <laughs> and so I, and I have I'll one let him do that. other observation yeah. for you, and that is since this was an old lumber yard, uh, if there is no lumbering outside, there would be enough parking, which is a nice additional feature of this particular property because the building sits sort of in the middle. I've used that lumber yard a lot because this was my neighborhood. Uh, and so there would be a fairly large uh, area for parking around the place. So that's also nice. And it could be accessed with the from Bill Nye, I guess, from the future Bill Nye and from 15th Street. It's a very nice corner location. Thank you. Any other questions from council? No, and the other one, I guess, could be answered. Yeah. Any other questions from council for no? Does the applicant want to come up and make a comment or help clarify things for Councillor Hansen? Yep. Thank you. Sure. Hello, City Council. Hello. My name is Kirk Johansson. Uh, and uh, here I'm here. half of you. <laughs> yes, exactly. Sometimes they call me Joe Hansen. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got some. We've also got these drawings here. Redoing the architectural frontage. Uh, I think we got that. Yeah. There you go. Not this one. The other one we got. Yeah. Okay. So there's a lot of uses in the C2 that can be utilized anywhere from you know a yoga gym or workout to you know. Show really in the front. We we're, we're kind of thinking more uh, retail showroom type, a tile carpet shop, hot tub, granite, that kind of a where you have a showroom and then have the availability of a warehouse type operation, electrical outlet, plumbing outlet. Um, originally, the uh, sort of the personal warehouse. There's a real gap between the the 10 by 20 or 20 by 20 storage facility that's just not quite big enough versus a 20 by 50 spot or even doubling up for a small contractor um, or even uh, you know a guy that wants to store snowmobiles or a boat or a motorhome kind of a thing you can double it up with a mezzanine so it's personal warehouse small contractor type of a type of a setting is what we're looking for um, and even there's bigger you know, it's 33,000 square foot building, so you can split these up into three or 4,000 square foot units. Um, light manufacturing would work. That's not really our ideal situation, but assembly type um, would probably fit well. Automobile repair, not probably something we want to look at just because the amount of vehicles that tend to get accumulated in a spot like that. But really get geared towards a small contractor type situation office office warehouse condo sounds good, good. okay so, yeah we're excited to bring jobs hopefully to laramie and get this property improved and so great thank you Gabriel. that's just my question thank perfect you. Gabriel. yes thank you i was just curious have you had any discussion with the uh, auto dealership to the south about maybe some kind of usage there um, a little bit. They're, I think they're looking to get more to a visible location themselves mm -hmm. and get off of 15th Street, so I'm not really sure what they're doing. Yep. Thanks. Yep. Anybody else? Any other questions from Council? Thank you. Thank you. Um, do members of the public have comment <coughs> on this particular item? Okay. I do. Can I ask a question of staff, please, Mayor? Sure. Um, for Planner Tini. Thank you. Um, I just have a quick question. <clears throat> can you explain, this is going to dip slightly into the next item, too, but can you explain the other possible uses, um, or I guess the different uses that you can develop for in auto urban commercial but you cannot in suburban commercial looking down maybe after this 
landowner, developer, like what could come after, I guess? Mayor and Council, so the, the key with the auto urban commercial is it does open up the ability to request the C2 zoning district. Um, but the auto urban commercial also allows for B2 request, B1, um, NB, and I believe that is it. And okay. so the C2 is kind of your highest level within the auto urban category or the auto oriented category there. Um, in terms of uses, typically what you're looking at is you're going up a step up from the from think high intensity retail. So think like your big box retail stores and things like that that have a lot of vehicles, but also adding in those like the manufacturing components, the indoor con contractors, office slash warehouse, things like that. That's what you're kind of you're adding that that segment is typically what most people go into and why they do that versus the B2 zoning. Uh, the B2 zoning limits you in being able to do some of those types of uses. I mean, that's your probably your biggest distinction. If you want more detail, I'd have to pull up the, uh, the actual use table and kind of run through those with you, so. Perfect, I have a follow-up too. Um, is the area where the current car dealership is, what is that, what is that currently? So that, that is currently suburban commercial. Um, we did approach, the currently the University of Wyoming owns that property, and as uh, Charles duly noted during Planning Commission's report, that that property, uh, we did approach them about follow, following into this type of comprehensive plan amendment and making that change as well for that property. Uh, the bureaucracy of, of a university as well to go through the proper chain and things, we just couldn't make it happen in time for this. It would not surprise me if that was something that came in the future for that site. An auto dealer fits much better into the C2 zoning district versus the B2 zoning district. And that's where you see uh, that typical request. And so I would say that that's likely what you're gonna see for the whole uh, southwestern corner, I'm gonna call it, of 15th Street and the future Bill Nye someday. is probably that more intense use backs onto the interstate. Um, as you get probably closer to third, that's where we start seeing that beat those B2 uses and things like that that you saw with the Spring Creek Village preliminary plat and such. So, one more follow up. Um, so, the car dealership is permitted under B2? Correct. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Councillor, for those in the audience, uh, Councillor Shumway is on the phone. So, Councillor Shumway, do you, do you have any questions? No. Okay, thanks. So, any other comments or questions? Yes, we do. Public comment. Public comment? I think we did ask for public. No, never did? Okay. Any public comment on this? All right, roll call, please. Shumway? has left the conference. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll come back to him. <laughs> we do them last and see if he reconnects. Sounds good. <laughs> okay. So we get a full. Gabriel. Yes. Hanson. Yes. McKinney. Yes. Felicus Absent. Schuster. Yes. Stoner. Yes. Pierce. Yes. <laughs> Somerville Absent. No luck. Joe, I haven't heard it say that he rejoined. Yeah. So, some way absent. That's um, six yeses, zero noes, and three absent, Your Honor. Thank you. <laughs> Moving on to item number 12, Councilor Stoner. <clears throat> I move to approve original ordinance number 1990 on first reading, rezoning one parcel of land from B2 business to C2 general commercial. The conference and set a public hearing for November 20th, 2018. Second. Thank you. <clears throat> so, just to update Councillor Shumway, I apologize, but um, we're moved, we have moved on to item number 12. Okay? Okay. All right. My button jets on the left side. <laughs> <laughs> If we can officially add that, I think we'll be okay. All right, where are we? Um, go ahead, Planner Teeny. 
Mayor, Vice Mayor and Council, thanks again. Um, as I noted during the last staff report, uh, this would allow the change to go from a B2 to C2 zoning district. Um, as we noted, this is kind of that step up in intensity to allow for the uses as described by uh, the applicant. Um, with this, prop, uh, with this uh, rezoning request, we did get the same and similar comments uh, from the public, more inquiries versus uh, we're concerned about the actual zoning request itself. Um, we do believe that, as we noted, that uh, we recommend approval of the zoning request as presented. Um, as I noted, I think in the future we're going to see this area change to this uh, a more intense use, and maybe as we go further down that Bill Nye corridor, that B2 zoning coming into play more as it back comes away from the interstate and goes away. So um, I'd be happy to answer any questions. And any questions from council? Councilor Hansen. Just thank you, Honor. Just to reiterate, what's the auto dealership zoned right now as? B2. That's a B2. Correct, yes. And it really <laughs> should be C2 or whatever, right? A C C2 is a permitted use yeah. for an auto dealership. I think that for B2, it's conditional use. And so okay. in the future, what would happen is if they were to do, let's say, large modifications to the auto dealer, they would go through the conditional use process. Um, it would be more advantageous for them over the long term to think about the C2 zoning. But it is a, it's allowed use within the zoning district. So, Because I'm looking at your, your staff report there. Uh, the subject property right now is B2, I guess, and to the north is residential, and the south is B2, and then R1, and then B2, right? Is that the zoning? Vice Mayor and Council, if you take a look at your um, this figure here, uh -huh. The subject property is zone B2 and to the south is zone B2. As you go to the north, you actually have some B1 zoning as well as R2 and R1 as you get further to the north. R2 zoning is your kind of middle of the road multifamily zoning. Doesn't allow for huge complexes, but it allows up to four units per building. And then across to the east of 15th Street is where you have the R1 zoning. Okay. So, any other questions? Do, um, does council have questions for the developer on this particular item? Okay. Do we have any <coughs> comments from council? Any comments from the public on this item? If you could identify yourself and then um, just sign in um, my afterwards. Name, my name is Maura Hanning, and um, I am uh, I sit on the Planning Commission at your behest. Thank you, by the way. It's a great privilege to um, work on behalf of the city. Um, so I didn't even come here for this agenda item, but I guess I just feel like I want to pitch in a little bit on how the discussion went at the Planning Commission meeting. Because um, we we didn't um, reach un, 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 ah, sorry a unanimous decision on this, and it was a bit difficult. Um, uh, two of us voted against it. I was one of them, it only, and it was a difficult position because I want to. I think it's great that we have somebody coming into town to develop this area. Um, I think that's uh, like. You don't want to get in the way of stuff like that around Laramie. <clears throat> However, it is right up against a residential area, and myself and another um, commissioner were not comfortable with the light industrial potential for the neighborhood. And I believe it also opens up to um, some potential for above ground fuel storage, fuel storage tanks, things like that, that I, I personally didn't find compatible with a residential area. Um, it was explained to me that the reason why it was requested to go from B2, where you could do a lot of these same uses <coughs> with a conditional provision, 
Um, it's just sort of, it's, it's difficult for the business then to be like, okay, this portion of the warehouse, we're going to get a conditional use for this, and, and over here we're going to need a different conditional use for this, and I can see how that could gobber up the flow of business. Um, how, however, it's still, um, I just feel like opportunities to um, have businesses like that are located in Laramie, there, there's other areas where they could be suitably located and I just ultimately felt uncomfortable with the stuff being right up against a residential area and and felt that things could go along fine with a conditional permit because al although the current owner is describing certain uses that sound compatible with the residential area um, I think um, Councillor Stoner brings up a good point about what, what happens in the future. So I, I didn't mean to gobber up the conversation. I just thought it was a value to sort of explain the quandary a couple of us got into for approving it. Uh, so thank you. Thank you. Are there any other public comments? I just okay. noticed by the way in our description it says the planning commission recommended council approve the zoning six yes zero no one absent. Is that, is that correct for for both for both so it's it's two two units of decision making that you have in in front of that's you. That's original was, ordinance first reading. That's maybe I'm reading the wrong one. Uh, let me see, that was 12, right? Item number 12. <coughs> and that's what I just read. We may have voted yes to allow the change to the, yeah. to, to the plan, but no to change the zoning. Okay. Which sunk the other one, I think. If Derek, Derek can clarify. <laughs> Vice Mayor and Council, that's correct. The, the cover sheet on the comp plan amendment, I think, is the wrong one. It should have said, it should say two, no, one absent, four, yes. The other one was the unanimous, I think, uh -huh. for rezoning. Right. Yeah. Sorry, I discovered that. No, that's great. Sorry. Good Mayor, observation. Yeah. That was good. Um, I just want to make you. sure I heard that right. Yeah. So the land use vote was, was 6 0, but the zoning vote was for the other way around. Other way around, yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. I'd like to make one comment a little bit to that. I know. It's a big building, and if we could move it out of town, you know, we'd make just move it out, but we can't. Um, but we're going to condo these up, all these units, and we're going to we're, we'll have the capability to sell the condo. So it's not like it'll be a thirty thousand square foot building available to one manufacturer, heavy user in the future. It's going to be broken up into potentially twenty or thirty units, or maybe ten units. So you know. I, I, we're kind of designing it for the small contractor type user. Um, it was brought up in the in the planning meeting as well. The fuel storage thing came up, and you can have fuel storage near residential in B2 as well. So I think that's maybe a little bit over overplay it. You know, I mean, I think it's a overblown fear maybe for this property, and that's all I have. So. <laughs> I have one more question of staff. Go ahead. Um, <coughs> Planner Tini, I have one more question. <clears throat> Thanks. Um, can you explain again what some other uses that are possible in C2 that are not possible in B2? <laughs> Thank you. I care about this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you. <laughs> Yes, second here. Other one doesn't even have planning commission recommendation.
So, <clears throat> as you as you go, when you start looking at most of the uses, you'll start seeing things like within like group living, for instance, are fairly similar across the board between B2 and C2 zoning. As you get into more uh, intense uses, so start thinking like retail or quasi-retail education. So like for instance, educational facilities are all the same. Um, healthcare facilities, for healthcare facilities, you're looking at almost the same. For instance, like a hospital is more a con is a conditional use in the C2 zoning district. So I think it's, you know, is that something you want in that district? Hospital might not always be the case. As you go into, let's see. Other uses, um, you're, so animal service, so things like animal daycares, things like that, all those are allowed within the B2 and C2 zone in the district just as a permitted use. You do see animal training, large animal training as a conditional use in the B2 zoning district. So something you might not want in one of those zoning districts. So something like on Grand <laughs> Avenue, for instance. Um, when you start looking at some, some of the other uses, uh, thinking like banks uh, permitted across both zoning districts, uh, bakeries, uh, coffee shops allowed within all those zoning districts, business incubation, conditional uses within both zoning districts, um, office, <coughs> office with showroom or warehousing facilities. So that's one of the items that I think that they're kind of gearing towards. It's a conditional use in the B2 zoning district, but it's a permitted use within the C2 zoning district. Research facilities, pharmaceutical companies are both conditional uses within the C2 zoning district, but not allowed within the B2 zoning district. Outdoor commercial recreation um, are allowed as conditional uses within the C2 district where they're not allowed within the, uh, or they're allowed as a conditional use also in the B2, but when you start getting into like racing sports, they're not allowed in the B2 zoning district, but are conditional use within the C2. Mm -hmm. um, other recreation, entertainment, indoor entertainment, all those things are very similar for the B2 and C2 zoning district. Personal services are almost all identical. So think like barbershops, dry cleaners, um, uh, any type of personal service, so like accounting or anything like that uh, would be allowed and this is similar. Retail sales, art studios, all the same across the board. Nurseries, for instance, so like a landscaping and nursery company, both allowed in both B2 and C2 zoning district. Um, when you get into some of the larger uh, stores like retail sales, wholesaling, production or storage, so that's something we're talking about where someone, you know, warehouses and storage is material. That is a conditional use within the B2 zoning district, but just a permitted use within the C2 district. Wholesale business permitted within all the districts. Um, as you look into like automobile car wash, supply stores, rental and leasing, all just permitted within both of those districts. There's a little bit of difference. Let's see, is that a little bit of like commercial parking lots would be permitted within the C2 zoning district, but a conditional use within the B2 zoning district. That's like a four pay lot or something like the park and ride that the university has. <coughs> Is there anything specific to industrial uses in particular? So if we go into some of the, I'm just going to say like, you know, more intense uses, you're going to be looking at, for instance, like a builder supply yard permitted within the C2 zoning district, not permitted within the B2 zoning district. So ProBuild was a non pre-existing non-conforming use of that location. Um, construction industry related. So that's like everything from cabinet makers to plumbers to you know anyone that does any type of those types of industries. It's a conditional use within the B2 permitted within the C2 zoning district. So that's a as the applicant noted, one of their main reasons why they kind of wanted to make that switch. Um, light industrial is conditional use within the C2 zoning district. A lumber yard is a conditional use within the C2 zoning district, but not permitted in the B2 zoning districts. 
Can I ask a question? Sure. To interrupt you. Can you give me a couple examples of what light industrial could look like? Yes. Um, so light industrial could be things like uh, someone that uh, makes, let's say, computer parts. Uh, it's a light industrial that's typically the light industrial is located all interior to a building and requires some sort of specialized industry related to it, but it isn't necessarily smokestacks if you want to th if you're thinking industrial like that. Um, <coughs> light industrial are also similar to what I would call this modern manufacturing that we're having today. So things like what high vis does, they fall into a little bit different category, but it's very similar. A lot of times they use enclosed machines to make or actually build something that requires either calibration or some sort of chemical process or something that requires them to be more specialized than just making it like on a, on a showroom floor or something. And so that's typically what we're seeing with the most, the most light industrial. Um, other, other things when you start getting into like some of the like manufacturing and processing, so like uh, cabinet, cabinet making, conditional use in the B2, permitted in C2, um, machine and welding, uh, same thing, conditional use versus permitted use. When you get f even further on into some things, um, you know, like even like like a slaughterhouse is a permitted use if it's under 4,000 square feet in B2 and C2 zoning district. Um, you go into larger zoning districts, it's all, or larger sizes, all conditional uses. Um, you could have an ice or cold storage plant, so where they store large amounts of goods. That's a conditional use in the C2 zoning district. Um, other things, uh, mini storage permitted in both B2 and C2. Warehousing, so that's conditional use in the B2 zoning district, but permitted in the C2 zoning district. Recycling centers and drop-off recycling, both conditional use and permitted uses within those districts, so they're the same. I and mean, that's kind of the, the rundown of the <laughs> list. Thank um, you. Yeah. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Absolutely. Got more than she asked for. <clears throat> So are there any other questions for Derek from council? Okay. So let's go for one more public comment. I don't know if this fits with my this or not, but <laughs> I looked at the map and I observed that to the north of Bill Nye, there's an undeveloped area. Is that going to be, maybe Eric can answer that question, will that be left as green space or just something undeveloped or what happens? That part, that little stretch goes right up against the uh, residential area. I think at that point those are our two homes, but anyhow, it's a question that would they, would that be a possibility? Judy, can you state your name? Sure. Oh, yeah. I'm Judy Snow. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Vice Mayor and Council, the, directly to the north of this property is where actually the Bill Nye corridor will go right. through. It's a 100-foot wide corridor that'll be there. And then to the north of that, you actually have property that's both zoned R2 next to 15th Street and as you go further to the west it turns into B1 zoning district and that's, those are the two zoning districts that butt up against the residential district that you the physical houses that you actually see today and then uh, as far as our knowledge we don't know what those people are going to build there um, the zoning would lend itself to in the R2 zoning district up to uh, four unit buildings throughout that whole area and then as you get into that B1 zoning district, I will not go through the list again, but um, <laughs> it, it, it would allow for some, low, think lower intensity business, retail, commercial uses. You're Typically you see lots of uh, you know accounting office, lawyer's office, things like that, personal services, coffee shops. Things. Those are the types of uses that you typically see in that B1 zoning. So um, no other idea beyond that. No buffer. 
particularly? Not, not to our knowledge, no, yeah. Okay, so. that was the question. Thank you. Thank you. So are there any other comments from the public? Council? Okay. If you could identify yourself for the record. I'm Erin O'Doherty. I just want to make the observation that it's expensive to build new buildings and we have too many vacant buildings in Laramie and I really would love to see one repurposed rather than um, than people putting up new buildings when we have plenty of empty like car dealerships in Laramie. So. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay, so comments from council. Let's just go through this one more time. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're good. Go ahead, city clerk. Stoner. No. Schuster. Yes. Shumway. Yes. Gabriel. Yes. Hanson. Yes. McKinney. Yes. Bleakus absent. Pierce. Yes. And Somerville absent. That's six yeses, one no, and two absent, Your Honor. Thank you. That motion passes. Um, City Clerk, could you tell me who the second was on that? I didn't. The second was Gabriel. Gabriel, thank you. Item number 13, Councilman Schuster. Thank you. The title is Resolution Declining Funds from the State Drinking Water and Clean Water Resolving Loan Funds and Authorized Funding from the Water and Wastewater Funds from the Public Works Service Center Project. I move to approve Resolution Number 2018-66, Declining Funding from the State Drinking Water Resolving Loan Fund in the amount of $3 million and the Clean and the State Clean Water Revolving Loan Fund in the amount of $2 million and transferring funding in the amount of $2 million from the Water and Wastewater Reserves and $1 million from the Water Fund Fixer Meter Project for the Public Works Center Project with the Mayor and Clerk to authorize to sign. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Ms. Brown. Yes, uh, council, mayor and council, I just wanted to give a brief synopsis of what is going on with the declining of the funds. Um, the funds were approved by resolution back in January and the board approved the funds in April. This was for loans regarding the public works center. Um, these loans are SRF loans and the loans are a pass through from the federal, federal grant a granting agent. So it is a federal grant and we are, we have strict regulations regarding the federal grant requirements. Um, as we got into the application, um, there was a lot of issues with this project because it's, it's kind of trying to put a square peg in a round hole in that we are trying to build a building with land allocations and uh, donated land. Most of these funds are really only for water and sewer pro line projects. And so um, working with the SLIB staff and um, the Department of Environmental Quality, there was continued raise of concerns of this project and is it really meeting the requirements of the federal guidelines. And some of the requirements uh, is as simple as how do you allocate the project costs when we have costs not just for the loans, but we're also charging general fund and it's all the waste. We have different funding sources. How is that fairly going to be allocated? Or uh, another issue was just um, we already had a CMAR contract before this started uh, because uh, people were looking for places for us to build and things like that. We never exercised the CMER. We only did the design portion, but because that was already done, that kind of doesn't tie in with the uh, federal requirements. So it just continues to have risk. We have not used the funds, so we're at the point where we either have to go use the funds or decline the funds. And um, based on all the parameters and the continuing concerns of does this really fit what we need we believe that it it is still a risk if we go forward with this construction with using these loans and so we're asking for declining of the loans 
Um, we just think that, and it's not just staff, I mean every, all the staff members, and I think SLIB has some, some concerns. They said they would try to work with us, but I, I think they keep, continue to bring up concerns also, um, that it's a greater risk assessments to us because if you if we go forth and we are in, out of federal compliance we could lose our federal grants all of them and so um, I think the benefit out does not outweigh the risk and so my recommendation is decline we we in turn then uh, what we did is we're looking at uh, funding this through our capital reserves the capital reserves are you know we reserve four to six years uh, of items because of our financial plan. And when we went to and increased our rates, we increased to have reserve levels so that if you have a big spike in your capital, you can pay for that. You don't have to go raise rates. And so we have some flexibility that I believe we have enough funds to go pay for these loans. Um, I also think we can then do the CMAR process, which actually uh, reduces the cost because CMAR you can um, vet the process versus a hard bid that this uh, grant is making us do um, and also um, I think that uh, we have also we're transferring a million dollars from that fixed meter which we were going to delay anyway till when we went to utility we thought it would be better when we look at a whole utility billing which is uh, kind of down the road, like three three years, four years down the road. So we felt that that would be a better project to do then. Um, so that is where we're at on this project and why we're asking for the decline of the, the loan funds. Um, I think it's, like I said, I have no problem with fin financing this. I don't think it's a, a problem. And also, we then can, and we have it in even next year, we have already loans being done for real projects, you know, the water lines and in solid waste uh, landfill and things that do really match the SRF fund requirements and uh, how they really fund those projects. So I think we can flip <laughs> financing where you're using cash now, use the loans in the next couple years. So I, I, I feel very confident that this is something we can do. We don't have any problems financing it. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer any of your concerns or questions. or. Councillor Schuster. And you used the word finance, so we will eventually pay these back to those accounts so they will become completely full and healthy again? Right. Well, yeah, I mean, we're using, I think they're full and healthy now. I guess yes. that's what I'm getting. I don't, yeah. I mean, we, but what I'm getting at is, you know, even like the sea line you guys delayed, there's $2 million in the sewer right now that I have, or you have, um, you know, if you're doing a loan next year, you can use extra funds this year, you know, so I, I guess, but I feel that, you know, we have six to eight million in enterprise funds every year anyway for cash for, the, for this type of stuff. And it's flexible because, you know, project costs go up and down depending on what you're doing. Pastor Hansen. Thank you. You very succinctly explained it of course, to the Finance Committee the other day. And one aspect in the title here is uh, uh, important to note. Uh, the, it says declining funding from the state drinking water and clean water uh, loan funds. Those state funds actually use federal money that comes into the state funds. Yes. And the state would have no problem with this, but if we look at the federal side, the feds may, think, may say you are not using the funds in the right way because they're only for whatever, right. uh, piping <laughs> or whatever, right. but not for buildings. Uh, and so uh, the, the state, and in finally we would be in trouble not having used the money really correctly the way it's and, supposed and to and be. And I think used. that it's still a use because they actually did a, agree with that use, but because of the existing contract and some of the complications of this, I, I think we are at risk and that the federal, oh, yeah. I mean, we ultimately are responsible for our federal grants. Yeah. Uh, the state would have some say in it, but I mean, ultimately, we're the ones that are going to get punished if we get a, sure. an audit and have a federal um, 
finding. So we have not done any of that. We haven't even used the funds. So we're just trying to preempt those things. And I want to reiterate, we have not used any of the funds. We're looking at this project. We've been looking at the project for s several months. And we just don't think it's a project that fits the funding model. Councillor Shumway, do you have any questions? No. Okay, thank you. Maybe there's a bit of a delay. Here. Yeah. Anyway, any other um, questions from council? Comments from council? Uh, members of the public, a comment or a question on this particular item? Okay. A uh, roll call, please. Palikas absent. McKinney? Yes. Gabriel? Yes. Stoner? Yes. Schuster? Yes. Hansen? <coughs> yes. Shumway? Yes. Pierce? Yes. Somerville absent. That's seven yeses, zero noes, and two absent, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, moving to item number 14, uh, Councilor McKinney. Uh, move to approve the original ordinance number 1991 as recommended by the Planning Commission on first reading in accordance with finding of fact conclusions of law and set the public hearing for November 20th, 2018. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Councilor Stoner, thank you. This is Planner Teeny up to bat here again. Vice Mayor and Council, thanks. Um, the item before you is, as it notes, establishes citation authority for our building and fire department. Nice. What this does is this provides the city of Laramie's fire and building code as well as anything else within 15, as designated by the city manager, uh, to write citations. The s violations are all the violations that could be found in ch Title 15, so this doesn't include parking or things like that and anywhere else in municipal code. The <coughs> provisions that you have in here uh, or that they're currently in code require f for us as a, as a department and division to go through the typical enforcement proceedings that we would go through if, for instance, we were to find a junk vehicle on a property and needed to abate that. Um, that typically takes months. Um, often if we don't find resolution that then ultimately will end up in court and doesn't resolve the more immediate life health safety issue which is where these cita this citation authority really is geared at. Often during our inspections through building code and fire we run into life safety issues that need immediate fixes not fixes in three months. Not only does it put current people that maybe own the building live in the building, rent the building, are occupying the building, sleeping in the building for as a hotel room, whatever the case may be, we're not able to address it except through this kind of slow process that works for all other zoning violations, setback issues, things like that, but not in this case. So <clears throat> what what we've done is we've prepared um, in conjunction with the city attorney's office and working with our building division and fire prevention uh, to basically draft what you see before you. Uh, the code changes that you see have a couple different key parts. If What I think sum is summarized best is if you take a look at the memo that was provided to the planning commission, there's a series of bullet points that goes through and explains what is actually being changed. In the actual ordinance, you'll see a purpose statement that's given. Um, in that section, you talk, it talks about the general penalties. It actually refers to Wyoming state statutes. One of the things you'll note is Planning Commission uh, talked about whether we should add the actual uh, statute within this actual ordinance. We conversed uh, with the city attorney. We said we decided to keep that out in case that number does change because it's within a section where that could happen and then that would make this invalid. So by referencing this statute and the exact wording, which is what you see here from Wyoming state statutes, I believe our city attorney, any good lawyer, would see this language and know that what section we were talking about in statutes. So we are going to go continue to go with that, which I agree with. 
Um, what you'll see is as you go into the next section, you'll see penalties. Um, penalties are based upon a first, second, and third offense for working without a permit. You then have a first, second, and third offense for working without a license. And then you have international co fire code violations. So there are things that are located within the international fire code that are specific. And then other violations within the 1524. The last section and the last main section in the changes, it does, talks, it does talk about what happens when someone uh, that is needing either permits or a license, so depending upon the two, um, does so and violates that uh, consecutively within a certain period. So it's a 12-month period. If you receive three violations, um, you are not able to get another permit for six months or a license for six months. If you would like to appeal that, there is an appeals process. Um, that appeals process either goes to, it goes to our building and fire code board of appeals, which they are set up for that to handle that. <laughs> Elsewhere in the ordinance, you'll see a few, there's a few <coughs> other minor changes as you go in this chapter all the way back through the chapter. Um, there is some changes that relate to currently the fire department can issue tickets if a sworn officer is with them and the off sworn officer issues a ticket. What we found is that officers are not versed in the code of international fire code and so that's often something that they're very uncomfortable to do. So that's why you see that being eliminated because their full authority then will be given in the revisions that we provided up in the beginning. Um, secondly, there are some other minor changes that remove a uh, violation and penalty section that would be contradictory to what we're putting in place, as well as a addition related to the reference of building code and fire code of appeals so that the proper appeals process is listed in code um, at the very, very end of this whole chapter. And so with that, um, it's, a, it's a very brief rundown. Um, I, I also have in our, uh, here staff-wise, I have uh, Tim Hoff uh, with our building department and Mark Doyle with our fire prevention office. Um, I would encourage them maybe to come up and just kind of give a brief explanation of some of the things that they often deal with. I think it's important for council to kind of see and, and hear from them. They're the ones on the ground. They're the ones that are dealing with this day to day. And so uh, this is something that I think is beneficial for the city long term and just the general life health safety issues i mean basic life health safety issues for our city so i'm going to leave it at that um and i'll let these guys come up and just give a brief explanation and then you can ask answer some questions if you have any of those so perfect thank okay. you gentlemen mr hoffman mr doyle or just mr doyle vice mayor Councilors, good evening again um, just to reiterate kind of what Derek was talking about or uh, Planner Taney was talking about, some of the issues that I run into and my inspectors run into in the public or in the in businesses and things like that, uh, if we find violations and people don't want to comply, we really don't have any recourse, so to speak. Uh, this gives us a little bit of, of leverage to do that. Uh, some of the some of the more life-threatening issues that we have, say an overcrowding situation in a bar, things like that, so, some of those things we're gonna call in still rely on law enforcement for the citation purposes, as far as I think. Um, but as far as like inspections go, things, infractions like that, um, typically this will give us a little bit of encouragement for the business owners to comply and continue to comply. Questions? Councilor Hanson. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, several of the sections say reinforces, so there was something beforehand. But I looked at, it, I think, point number three. It says establishes citation authority for special municipal officers des designated by the city of Laramie. There, there was nothing of this sort beforehand. Uh, the the police or the fire department didn't have any citation, citation authority. Authority, no. We so don't, I didn't have a ticket book <coughs> to carry around and write citations with. But 
it was it was in the code would, yeah but we just didn't have the vehicle to, uh -huh. to apply it yeah and and that jives with federal mi mandates that you can do that no problem there uh, i think the other one all says uh, uh, you probably have to explain the last one to me uh, corrects an outstanding code process error building and fire code board blah 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 what does that mean uh, appeals is a proper appeal body for fire code appeals this is detailed etc I have no idea what it means there is a there is an appeals board built into two facets of the appeals board there's one uh -huh. within the city and the and the code that we we just adopted in the consent agenda there's an appeals process and board there there's also one at the state level okay so and those appeal appeals boards exist already correct but it says co corrects an outstanding code process error so what was this all about vice mayor and council the section that i'm talking about so it's the last bullet that you're looking at in the staff report there at the very end of 1524, there is a section that it said that all of these issues may be appealed to the city manager. Oh. The city manager isn't the right, it wasn't the right term. It should be the Building and Fire Code oh. Board of Appeals because they're the ones that handle all of the International Building Code and Fire Code appeals. <laughs> so it was just an error, so we corrected the error. Correct the error of your ways. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Any other questions from council? Thank you. Thank you. Um, comments? Okay, sorry. I'm sorry, I, uh, Your Honor, Mayor, Council. Um, I would just speak to the building division part of this. Um, this is meant to be more of a deterrent rather than a punishment in my way of thinking. Um, we don't have a lot of problems with local um, companies as such, contractors, where we have the problem is out-of-state contractors coming in for a, what they consider a small job. They're in and out in a few days. Um, it's really a uh, an unfair situation to our local contractors because they go through the licensing process, they license their people, um, they're qualified, and uh, an out-of-state contractor comes in, does this job without a permit, without being licensed, it, the playing field isn't level. And uh, this is one of the aspects that we're we're trying to do here <coughs> is to, to level the playing field. Um, the other big um, aspect of this is public safety. Um, we there's been situations that um, occur, and I can give examples if you want. But um, the citizens of Laramie were in danger, and it it took way too much time to correct the situation. Whereas if we could have written a citation so that the offending parties appeared before a judge, um, then, you know, the, it may not stop it, but it, it, it sure would make people think twice maybe about doing it again, so. Um, that's kind of my take on the situation. If there's any other questions, I'd be happy to answer. Any other questions or comments from council? Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Shumway? No, I have no questions. Okay, thank you. Vice Mayor and Council, and I think one thing just to kind of conclude what this discussion is, the the contractors and the people that are getting their licenses and getting the proper permits, they'll never deal with the section of code. <laughs> this will never address them. Um, as as our staff mentioned, that's kind of the this is where this is how they are dealing with it. Um, one thing to note also is we did receive a public comment that you were provided, um, a comment in support of the 
regulation from one of our local uh, contractors that you know does all the does plumbing and so aside from that um, I'd be happy to answer any questions and then I think we'll go from there great Makes sense. so I, I don't believe council has questions comments any any members of the public want to make, come up come on up Hi, I'm Maura Hanna, and I sit on the Planning Commission, and this is the agenda item that I came to speak to. Um, we on the Planning Commission, it was a great night where all seven of us were present. We had a robust um, dialogue about the slippery slope of adding the citation potential and um, came to a unanimous agreement that this was a, a really good thing for the community um, to allow uh, enforcement right off, right, right away when you see a safety violation. Um, it also, considering the 700 pages of code, uh, it would be a really tremendous thing to, for the code inspectors to be able to enforce on the spot for not finding a permit um, and licenses that are required. Um, so we, we agreed that this was a good thing, that it was a well-balanced um, citation approach that allowed discretion still and had um, a, a sort of administrative review process so that it can't be citations running amok. Um, so it seemed like a balanced approach that we thought would be especially beneficial to helping improve our housing stock, um, which is something that's been on my mind because the Planning Commission, uh, uh, well, nobody else could go. So I attended the um, the community builder um, leadership on workforce housing. So housing is on my mind, and housing I know has been on your mind, and the, the 2015 housing study also recommended um, an increase in code enforcement. So this seems like a, a really no-brainer um, step forward that I think would make our town safer. Um, and it would uh, start to improve housing stock, possibly. So thank you. Thank you. Anybody else would like to make a comment from the public? No. <laughs> How did he know? He must have... Um, if we could do roll call, please. Schuster. Yes. McKinney. Yes. Gabriel. Yes. Hansen. Yes. Felicus, absent. Shumway. Yes. Stoner. Yes. Pierce. Yes. Somerville, absent. That's seven yeses, zero noes, and two absent. Thank you. I think at this time we'll just take a short break. Um, be back here at 8 o'clock. Come back and finish our last item. And then. Um, Okay, is that all right? Because I, I'm thinking that this one might get a little... We're going we're yeah. to go. Concert yeah. Gabriel, uh, number 15. You bet. Thank you, Vice Mayor. <laughs> uh, this was an ordinance that was brought to our attention by uh, the city attorney. And this is in second reading. And so I would move to approve on second reading, original ordinance number 1989, amending section 10.20.040 of the municipal code related to the maximum driving speeds in the city. Do you have a second? Second. Councilor Schuster, thank you. Vice Mayor and Council, nothing has changed since the first reading. Uh, this simply says, the speed limits in the city would be as posted, and if nothing is posted, the maximum speed limit is 30 miles an hour. Perfect. Thank you. Any Councilor Hanson? Your Honor, uh, I would like to make a slight amendment to Section 10.20.040, I assume. Yeah, speed limits, maximums. Uh, and there is a sentence that uh, starts uh, in the second line, I just dot, 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 no person shall drive a vehicle on a highway, city, alley, uh, uh, 
or alley within the city at a rate of speed in excess of the posted speed limit. Uh, no, that's, wait a minute. And the next sentence, it says, if no speed limit is posted and there are no special, special hazards, no person shall drive as a vehicle on a city street within the city at a rate of speed in excess of 30 miles per hour. And to add to that section at that point, or on an alley within the city at a rate of speed in excess of 15 miles per hour. Is, is there a second on the, second. So, so this is an amendment. Is there yes. a second on the amendment? Mm -hmm. Let me explain the amendment. I live in a street that has alley and people across the street. I also have a rather young and boisterous population at both ends of uh, the street. Um, uh, I don't call it student housing, it's just a uh, common occurrence. Uh, and I've, I have people, people zip through that uh, alleyway at a fairly high rate of speed. Uh, I think there's a danger. Uh, you know, we have seen in the news recently uh, kids being killed crossing streets getting to the school bus. Uh, kids do use these alleyways to get to school, uh, and people do too. The, usually the sight lines are rather uh, impeded because there are bushes and whatever growing, uh, uh, and as a matter of fact, the garbage truck folks come through and tell us we need to cut our bushes down so that they can collect the, the refuse. Uh, so I think there's a certain danger involved and I think we should at least make the statement in those alleys you shouldn't drive faster than 15 miles an hour uh, for the safety of all people who live there. And that is my uh, feeling that we should not just blankly say you can drive 30 miles an hour in those alleys. Thank you. <clears throat> Any questions or discussion? Go ahead, Councilor Gabriel. Thank you, Vice Mayor. In light of that, I would like the uh, city attorney, I mean, it makes uh, sense to me what Councilor Hansen is talking about. From your standpoint, city attorney, do you have any particular comments or concerns about Councilor Hansen's amendment? Um, uh, Vice Mayor Councillor Gabriel, uh, no, it, it it works. I drafted that amendment for Thank him. Thank you. <laughs> I asked him to do that. <laughs> I, I just wanted to make sure we were on the same page. Good. Just any don't other, trust me, do you? <laughs> <laughs> any other comments or questions from Council? Members of the public on this particular item? Okay. Roll call, please. So roll call on the amendment. Oh, yes. Roll call on the amendment. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Gabriel. Yes. Hanson. Yes. <clears throat> McKinney. Yes. Felicus, absent. Shumway. Yes. Schuster. Yes. Stoner. Yes. Pierce. Yes. Somerville, absent. That's seven yeses, zero noes, and two absent, Your Honor. Thank you. That amendment passes. Now back to the main motion. As amended. As amended, yes. Any further questions or comments on the main motion? Any comments from the public on this particular item? Okay. Roll call, please. Stoner. Yes. Schuster. Yes. Shumway. Yes. Felicus, absent. McKinney. Yes. Hansen. Yes. Gabriel. Yes. Pierce. Yes. Somerville, absent. That's seven yeses, zero noes, and two absent, Your Honor. Thank you. So moving along to item number 16, which is public comment on non-agenda items. Okay, no public comment. Number 17, uh, for council, do we have consideration of future council work session topics? We are quiet. 
Oh, Sorry, go ahead. Um, I want to put on our work session topics, uh, Pilot Hill. Um, they're trying to do a uh, purchase of it so that no motorized vehicles or anything can be up there. We have a lot of openings that go directly into our aquifer. So I want to talk about how the city can help out with that. So I wish to put on there, and I know I need a second on that, but... Uh, second. You bet. <coughs> <coughs> Okay, um, so could, could it be more of an update on that? We can do an update on that if you'd like to, but I, I, the city is contributing a huge amount of personnel helping out on it, but I think financially we ought to be doing something too because we are talking about clean water. This is where... Uh, a lot of the inlets and uh, we can get Pilot Hill if you'd like them to. They will do a presentation on clean water and show where the inlets are up there. So um, I just believe that if, if they don't get this done, they're going to divvy this thing up and they're going to make, uh, I call them ranchettes, 10 to 35 acres up there. We're going to have all kinds of vehicles and everything else up there. So we either need to do something or say we don't care. So. Okay, so, and I apologize, I might be way out of the loop on this, but I thought that this was going to be a... Recreation. A trade, a land trade. State land board. Some State of it land will board. be, but it's not all of it. We don't, we don't have enough yet. So yeah. maybe an update would be... Presentation. Update yeah. presentation. <laughs> Gabriel? Yeah, thank you. In, in light of that, I would still like to know what the city's commitment is to that development in total. I know there's been a lot of discussion about state land board and a swap of land, mm -hmm. but I'm still not clear mm -hmm. because there was a, a big commitment from the city on extending the street 45th and, and no, no, so no, on. That's completely different. I, I know, but I mean, okay. it would be nice to know I, because I haven't heard anything recently you know, other than the land swap, what the city's commitment is to all of this I development think, on think, Pilot Hill. I think it's all in in the county, right? It's, it's, okay. That's two different projects. I want to make sure you know that. 45th right. was an offer of land to the city, right. not to the county. Mm -hmm. The county is the one working on Pilot Hill. They're two different completely ones. And I, I mean, I can offer I more information, that. but this isn't the place or the time okay. to do this. We need to either, because we're getting into a discussion on something that's not on the agenda. Yeah, okay. Right, so if we just have a, an update on the Pilot Hill project, how's that for a potential work session? Um, Vice Mayor, if I could just clarify, um, certainly staff can provide an update on what commitments the city has and has not made to this point. Um, in addition, we would, I understand, invite the Pilot Hill Working Group and the Director to come and present an update to you on where they are. And he so has completely a clean water presentation for it, just about water. Right. Staff are supporting the various committees and participating in them, but this effort really is outside of, of the city, and I think it would be useful to invite the working group that is working on yeah this acquisition and the land swap and the purchase agreement with the county and the landowner. Um, they're going to be more informative than we are. But okay. We can certainly update you on what commitments we have or have not made at this point in time. That would be great. Perfect. In a contractual or financial way. Perfect. Thank you. Any other? Um, uh, the way I understand it, Your Honor, we are talking about mainly land that's not within the city limits. Uh, so should we, when we have a work session like this, not invite the, the commissioners to participate in something like that? Because that's land that's out in the, in the county. I, I, I'm just confused, maybe. Uh, or am I not confused? Um, no, the, the purchase agreement <laughs> is between the Board of County Commissioners and the private property owner. And yeah. I understand yesterday there was a third amendment to that purchase agreement um, considered by the oh. uh, commissioners. We requested a copy through the county clerk. Have we seen that yet? No? Not yet. Um, anyway, um, so yes, um, the county is the 
acquirer or purchaser of property. Correct. But I think that the, the working group on the Pilot Hill acquisition includes many county representatives. Okay. And mm -hmm. it will, the, their update would be comprehensive and share Good. with you what the county is Thank doing. you. That clarifies it. Thank you. Okay. So any other uh, work session topics to get on the agenda? Okay. So moving right along. Councillor Hansen. I, I think you probably should mention that upcoming meetings that we are adding a meeting, right? Yes. December yeah. 10th. On the, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we did that with mm -hmm. the. In the consent yeah. agenda. In the consent okay. agenda. And now it says here upcoming meetings, you see, that's why I stated. That. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, then I'll go to number 18. I move that council adjourn to executive session regarding land negotiations according to Wyoming statute paragraph 16-4-405A Roman numeral 7 and personnel according to Wyoming statute uh, paragraph 16-4-405A Roman numeral 10 and litigation. Wyoming, uh, according to Wyoming statute paragraph 16-4-405A, Roman numeral 3. Thank you. Do we have a second? second. Thank you. Councilor Stoner. All right. We are adjourning to All those session. in favor? Thank you. All those in favor? All, All those in favor? favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Thank you. Opposed? Aye. Aye.